We spoke last year, this time last year, in fact, in Singapore, and it was interesting. The primary concern that we were talking about was actually rising interest rates. Things have changed dramatically. What's going on in Hong Kong and how's that affecting your business? I suppose what's happened in Hong Kong is just like what's happening everywhere else. Bump into my Chilean friend, they're having the same problem, Bolivia, everywhere. And it is, a, it is not just Hong Kong. It's much greater than Hong Kong. It is really a, 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 a sea change in the world that I see, and there will be a lot more of it. And the technology that is being used by the rioters in Hong Kong is uh, really the most advanced, and that will continue, and many people are learning from them. I just wonder where did they, the Hong Kong rioters learn it from? How does it end, though? Because I suppose the difference between what's going on in Hong Kong and, as you say, some of the other discontent that you see in other countries is that the political framework at this point doesn't seem to allow for any resolution between the protesters and lawmakers. Well, riots anywhere in the world tend to move in the same uh, pattern. And I think that Hong Kong will probably follow, in general terms, that pattern there will have to be uh, some political solutions and it cannot be just initiated from Hong Kong. Uh, it will have to be something, uh, Beijing has to play a very critical part. Economic conditions are looking recessionary, retail sales are down, tourism numbers are down. It's looking pretty dire. How's it affecting your business, particularly your mall business? Hong Kong retail rent uh, is down, that's for sure. Um, we will do our best to break even for our Hong Kong rental this year. Uh, thank God our mainland China uh, retail is doing very, very well. So I think that we are still hoping to have a very, uh, I'm aiming at even a double digit total uh, rental. We'll see. Do you believe that things will resolve in Hong Kong, that the, the Hong Kong economy will recover from this? or? Is there a part of you that's starting to think about doubling down on investments in other parts of your portfolio? <laughs> we have frankly not increased our Hong Kong portfolio for a long, 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 long time. Mm. It's really mainland China. Put it this way, they're growing at 6%. Hong Kong's growing at 2-3%. So where do you want to be? In mainland China, a dummy like me have a chance to make in some money. Hong Kong is a mature market and there's a lot of good players there, so why bother? We have not increased our portfolio in Hong Kong for a long time already. What would, you like to, what would you like to see from policymakers? What would you like to see from Carrie Lam? Uh, I think uh, the better question is, if I may, uh, is uh, what total package solution can it be uh, of which uh, Beijing has to be a part of it. I don't think that Hong Kong itself uh, can resolve the situation. What? Would Beijing's next move be, though? I have no idea. If I know, I would not be sitting here, Heidi. <laughs> Do you feel like this impasse can be broken? Oh, yes. Every problem eventually will pass. And the same thing with Hong Kong. It's just a matter of what form and shape it will be. Uh, Hong Kong will be hurt. There's no question about it. Uh, how much can we recover uh, is the question. I think the financial service uh, sector will still be fine. Uh, for the future. There's frankly not a whole lot of alternatives. The loosening of mortgage requirements did very little. The loosening of mortgage requirements did very little to quell the unrest. Has it made a difference to your business? Well, it is not meant to quell the unrest. Uh, it is just uh, hopefully do something for the economy. Um, the amazing thing is uh, I haven't seen uh, uh, sales, uh, residential sales, in terms of price uh, drop that much. So um, that's a good sign. Yeah. As I was saying, when we were sitting in, in Singapore at the Capella, at the first New Economy Forum last year, we were talking about the impact of rising interest rates. Since then, the doves have taken control of the Fed and a number of other central banks around the world. How's monetary policy affecting your business? <laughs> uh, my company is a little strange. We are so lowly geared. And frankly, many real estate companies from Hong Kong uh, are rather lowly geared. So what happens to an interest rate really doesn't affect us that much. It affects a lot of people, but not us. Where do you see opportunities then? You already talked about mainland China and obviously being much more appealing than Hong In Kong for a number of In the high-end luxury retail shopping center business, mainland China is just beginning to scratch the surface. Other people say uh, it is um, uh, hotly contested. Well, if you are in the two-star, three-star space, sure. If you're in a five-star space, uh, the competition is not that keen. There's only about, what, five of us, perhaps, uh, mostly from Hong Kong, that know how to do luxury malls. 
and uh, the China is humongous. It is what hundred some cities that are over uh, one one million, and something like ninety some cities that are over three million, seventy some cities that are over five million. So there's tons of opportunity in the mainland of China as far as my business is concerned. It's interesting. So you're still banking, you're still putting your money behind the luxury Chinese consumer, even as the country is being gripped by an economic slowdown, a trade war, geopolitical tensions. All those problems that you say are actual situations, but my business is a long-term one. From the day I lay eyes on a piece of land until the time I open the shopping centers, if I can do it in ten years, I'm doing well. Where do you see the biggest headwinds, though? What's the biggest challenge? This has been a very optimistic conversation so far, Ronnie. Actually, the headwinds are uh, are getting better for business people like me. Uh, I'm seeing more opportunities. If the economy overall slows down, which may be, it is inevitable, perhaps as economic development grows for a certain stage. Uh, if it does, maybe there are more opportunity for me to buy land. The new economy forum is about creating a new commun- a community, a global community, to address global problems. What's the biggest problem that you think needs a solution that policymakers, that experts, innovators should be looking for today? Well, first of all, let's identify the real issues. If all I hear here in this place uh, are problems that are already spoken by many, many people, then uh, sorry. It's not going to resolve anything because we are not discovering really a lot of the new, a, a lot of the real problems, and neither will we have any real uh, innovative solutions. And I like to see more non-government people here, uh, or even former government officials. Uh, if if what somebody says is something that uh, I already know, I know what they're going to say before they say it. Why bother? Let's have some real new ideas. Okay, very quickly then. What's the real problem in Hong Kong right now? In Hong Kong, it's a long story. You like to come back to this issue. I understand that's your job. Uh, it's my job to uh, well, anyway, uh, all the way back to the negotiation between the British and the Chinese. I think uh, the mainland, Ch- well, China made a lot of mistakes. Uh, too overconfident, underestimating the British. It's not a good idea, uh, and the understanding of Hong Kong uh, in Beijing is perhaps really lacking even today. And it, unless Beijing really find, learn about Hong Kong and the real issues there, uh, the future uh, will still be up and down.